I've been down into the jungle. <laughs> I've been da, 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 next to you. <laughs> I know, that's actually pretty damn good. I know. You can tell she sings. Uh, I'm always like, I know you can belt it out in the shower. Only in my shower. Yeah, don't tell you. I was going to play some theme music, but I didn't because... Ani is no fun. I'm just kidding. Cause <laughs> Laying down the hammer. Just kidding. I'm just trying to make sure that our podcast doesn't get yanked down from uh, iTunes for using copyrighted they music. They might yank it down because I sound just like Selena. They'll think it's her. <laughs> I know. They'll pull it down. I'm like, no, guys. It was just me. This was the unreleased uh, edit. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys realized that. So uh, today. Let's start. Yeah. Danielle. Whoa. We have a new person with us today. Holy smokes, we do. What's your name? Um, Mackenzie. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, Mackenzie. <laughs> I'm Mackenzie Davis. I just moved here <laughs> from Utah last week. It feels like a month ago, mm -hmm. honestly, after last week. <laughs> um, but it's amazing. I've been a part of DKW's like training programs for, gosh, I don't know, ever since Danielle allowed one, I went to it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been coming ever since. Jeez, she just can't, stalker. <laughs> she just can't get rid of me. So anyway, yeah, I'm here. I'm working in the salon. I'm part of the training team now. And... A part of the podcast as of five minutes ago, Apparently. so I'm really excited. <laughs> I would just like to say that the last time I said that someone couldn't get rid of me, I was called a cockroach. So I think we have a new cockroach now. <laughs> I will gladly take that title. <laughs> we, we need those, so you're welcome. <laughs> So today, what we're going to be doing is actually going through another topic of the strategic seduction, which in itself is capturing permission. Last time that we started this, we were doing um, communicate a message. And like Garrett said, we're going to be going through one every single four weeks now. So we're officially on the second part. But with that, we're hitting a certain topic today. Val, what is our topic today? Um, production. Talk to me about production. Um, if you don't have production, then you don't get the next steps, which is profit which is our favorite <laughs> um and you can't keep going on so it's our fourth it's our second step of the four so mm -hmm. production doing the work i feel like everybody needs to hear this like at any level we all want more profitability and we need production <laughs> in order to increase our profitability yeah mackenzie first time on the podcast first time this is really weird in here don't don't fuck lie. it up <laughs> what do you see at protection as Protection. Production. Sorry. I'm like, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> Production is really kind of what you're putting out there and, and what's coming out of your business. Absolutely. Perfect. So with that, the main topic that we're going to be doing inside of production is marketing. Marketing itself is something that can span a lot of different topics and a lot of different ways, even in the midst of social media and how you run ads. So Danielle, Talk to us about the marketing that has been going on inside of NBR, DKW, everything. Man, we are always about testing. Like whenever something gets oversaturated, it's time to to think uh, to think through things differently and test new things. And people always want, like even in our classes, people always want like a, a direct, um, like step-by-step -step process to production. Can you give me the checklist of production, please, so I can make $1 million next year? And you're like, yes, you just do A, B, and C, and poof, you're ma you're magically a millionaire. But um, no, we're always, we're constantly, the market is constantly changing, Mark, and it, it's evolving. And especially with like social media and ads and collaborations and everything that's out there right now I'm constantly trying I've always been a big fan of like trying to figure out how to get ahead of the game predicting like where where are t trends going where are things moving what can we try like and so right now specifically with like production we've been doing a shit ton of paid ads through social media um I like to I like to look at you Ani stop <laughs> telling me to look at the camera <laughs> um Garrett you I have to have Ani and Garrett to like keep me on track because I'm such a visionary my mind just goes whoop so um but no like we've been just testing a ton of ads targeting markets um and just different things like that through social media to find out what's working and what's not and just recently I know like just kind of going back to like over like the numbers I was like oh my god what are we doing because I think people get freaked out of this idea of like investing in their business because there's so mm -hmm. much free marketing on social media and so they put all this time into like engagement and social media only realize they're making like if they realize how much time they're spending on social media they're pay getting paid like four dollars an hour to do so <laughs> and so and sweet so, sign me up right and so it's like for me it was like i even remember like garrett scared's like i'm gonna he started doing ads in his own business like a couple years ago and his business like skyrocketed and i was like okay well i i think it's time we need to test that inside of our business and we need to figure out what works inside the hair industry um and i think and i i think think that um hair stylists and I can speak from my own experience it's like we we kind of tend to be a little bit cheap with 
are like wanting to put Very money cheap. into our business sometimes, which is funny. We're just, and then, like I said, if you tally up the amount of hours that you're on social media, you're like, holy shit, like I'm getting paid $4 an hour for this. So for anyways, for us, we started testing a ton of ads in inside of social media and trying to figure out what works um, through and using a software called called ClickFunnels. And if you want more information about that, obviously look <laughs> look us up um, online through social media, Instagram, Natural Beauty Rose, DKW Selling, things like that. And you can kind of see some of our ads. But what we realized, like w- we just started testing, we put like 6000 dollars in and we got like ten thousand dollars back in return Mm -hmm. and like at the time like six thousand may sound like a lot to you it may sound like nothing and so when we looked at that we're like wow we actually had an investment uh we actually made four thousand dollars there you know what i mean and that's when we didn't we were just testing and we didn't even know what we were doing so sometimes people are thinking they're like you're gonna test ads or you're gonna test things through your your marketing and then like you're like oh crap it didn't work work out but like in our even in our experience like what we've been doing is working at some level and and we're now we're looking to kind of improve it to increase profitability and so val <clears throat> hairstylists we are notorious for not marketing at all and i know when we first started doing marketing you were also a little bit hesitant to jump into it so what did you see from coming a place of not wanting to do it at all to just finally committing probably what like a year in and finally marketing what did you see for yourself i'm slow to commitment <laughs> obviously <laughs> um just because it was foreign so i think we get stuck in our ways like before it was like you just went on like referrals and that's how like you built your book of business so that's kind of like when i first came into the industry that's what i knew that's what i was comfortable with and then i started working for danielle and she's like well let's see your instagram i'm like my what like <laughs> taking pictures of clients what are you talking about But as I would see, like, results of what other people were doing and what we were teaching in the program, I'm like, yeah, I got to get on board on this train. Like, it's working. And so I think when you see the results, then you know, like, okay, now I got to keep doing with it. Even like Danielle was saying, we're doing it with paid marketing and we're looking at it and what's working. And then now we're able to, like, hone in and tweak and make it even better. And same thing, like, I feel like on the marketing that we do with, like, our daily four that we teach our students, like, You need to see like what's working and then jig it from there so that you can get the right qualified client in your chair. If you're not marketing to that, you're not going to get the right person in your chair. And so what exactly dictates a right qualifying client for you? Um, I mean, or even in general for stylists, because here's the thing with stylists, we tend to think that the more clients we have, the better everything is. The more people that sit in our chair every single day, the more money we're making when realistically we know at this point that that's not true. So when it comes down to actually getting qualified leads through marketing, how have you seen like a difference between qualified leads and not? Because I feel we all come through the mindset of the more is better. Yeah. So I'm looking for like a client who wants extensions, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, I want someone who wants like soft sun-kissed color. I want someone who wants extensions like long term, not someone who's like, oh, I'm just going to try it out for like one time. Like I'm looking for like that longevity. I like to build a relationship with the client. So I definitely that's part of like something that I'm looking for when I have a client. So soft color extensions, NBR extensions always. And then um Someone who will be addicted to them like me, because that's who, who I relate to. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Only addiction. Mackenzie, were you always a good, because you're good at, very good at marketing now. Were you always kind of on that, on board with that and kind of on that train or did you have to work up to that? No, absolutely not. I first started out in a commission salon and so I didn't really need marketing. Like my, I actually prided myself for a lot of years on how well I was at getting referrals from from current clients. And then finally I realized like, I'm actually really tired of doing old ladies haircuts all the time. And I would prefer to do color and extensions all the time. And so that's when I really got on the um, uh, Instagram game and the Facebook game and just went all in. I, I studied anything and everything that I could. Hashtag, I remember when it was like really cool to hashtag and like you had to be <laughs> good at <laughs> yeah, like hashtagging. <laughs> and so I like any class I could find on hashtagging, I would take it because it was... Wait, they had classes on hashtagging? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Don't worry, I paid for them. <laughs> 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 they were not worth the money. <laughs> but it, it just... I Girl, see this symbol? <laughs> you put that and then a word and then that and then a word. <laughs> and then you make your own hashtag and you're even cooler. <laughs> but I I think just... Um, I, I really prided myself on... I had old stories that I prided myself on. And then once I realized, oh, like I can actually target and shoot for a client that I really enjoy... That that's when I was like, oh, yeah, I love marketing. You know, what's interesting. Sorry. And I'm just going to like no, go. cut in and say this. Like, I remember 
um, it's it's funny when when I I feel like social media now is to the point where like everybody's on it. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like even the old school hairdressers are finally like fuck it. Like I've got all these little <laughs> rookies that are like passing me up like tenfold, and like I worked twenty years behind the chair to build this up, and they're pulling this shit off in six months, and they're finally they're finally like all right, I get a, I gotta get on board. But then some I still I still to this day think back to this salon I worked at forever ago in Utah, and there was this there was this woman and she was a single mom of three kids and she had the the tons of old ladies and tons of random like clients and she was just like she was just hustling I mean she was working full time and then I kind of I remember I had a conversation with her and I asked her what she made and and she told me and I was like oh my god you're working that much and and you're only producing that and I'm thinking like I'm making more in just like two days do, doing doing the extensions and things like that. And I was like, well, why don't why don't you raise your prices? And she's like, well, you know, I can't. And I'm like, well, why don't you jump on social media? Because this is kind of like right when social media is getting around. And she was like, no, I can't. And she'd have she'd be the stylist that had the color all mixed up and ready to go. Mm. And I still to this day, I I because she lives in a town where I'm from, and I'm like, is so and so still doing the same clientele? And sure enough, doing the same thing. Like, and I'm just like, man, that's so. I think that's so. Um, that's so crazy to me. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm they're like stuck in their old ways. They're yeah. just stuck in the story in their old ways, and it's like, I'm like, oh, you just you have no idea. You could actually be spending more time with your kids, and you could have all you have to do is like l- let go a little bit and, and choose something different. But I think so many people get it's they they don't they don't want to change. They don't want to change for some reason. They they're scared to change, like in fear of failure and or scared of what people will think of them or scared of what they'll think of themselves. You know what I mean? And so it's just, it's just so interesting. Like I find like people that kind of get stuck in that story with, with their production and with their marketing. And not only that, I think with what you said about people being scared to change and move and grow, that really is, it's just a fear Mm -hmm. that they have no idea. And they have so many stories inside of their head that they can never change and never let go of and never rid themselves of. Because a stylist, we're just told, this is just what it is. And especially if she's been doing hair that long, well, then at that point, she's like, this is how we all did it. This Mm -hmm. This is literally just what we did. So when it comes to marketing, because your marketing game is super strong now, Danielle, like with your blog and with, I mean, everything that you do, but you didn't always start off that way. Yes, I did. <laughs> it was perfect from the get-go, no, totally. I, you know what is interesting now? Like, if you would have t- even asked me, I mean, paid ads wasn't around, but, like, if you would have said two, three years ago, hey, Danielle, we're going to put six grand into your advertising, and it might not work out. I'd be like, well, no, we're not. We're not actually going to do that ever, <laughs> but thank you. Um, and so, but now when I start to see, like, you have to kind of gamble, and you kind of have to, like, try new things to see what's working. And now I feel like my marketing game is strong because I go into the attitude of, like, okay, the only way to stay ahead of the game is to test. Mm -hmm. Like you can take all the advice and you can take all the classes in the world you want, but you just have to be willing to test different things and try different things within where you live and what you're doing. And you don't know unless you test. And usually, usually you go in, I mean, it's not like you're going in blind. It's not like we're like, hey, let's put an ad out in hopes it works because I always encourage people to, even within our program, I'm like, you better believe that my hustle behind social media for the past like three to five years, definitely when I put out an ad, it, it helps back it. They can come back and be like, oh, she's got a good following. She has a good product. So you can't like you can't just be like, oh, well, Danielle gave us this step by step process and we just have to do paid ads. And that's the that's the answer. And you've you've still got to build build a little bit of that credibility. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I've learned through doing this is like I had to put it in a period of time of of not just like marketing and doing the whole social media. But what I realized is I had to put the time into leveling up my skills so that when I'm at the point where I want to really push push production, push um, ads, push things like that. Like my, like myself and my team were like, it's fucking spot on and you're going to get an amazing experience. And I feel like what we have to offer is going to be so much better of an experience than anybody else that's offering extensions at their salon that they come in and they leave saying, how did I not find you guys sooner? And that was my goal. So my goal was like, yeah, I'm going to hustle on social media, but I'm going to, I'm just going to continue to educate my skills and try to figure out how to become a better stylist and be, become better at your craft. And I think I shared that actually on a blog post this week. I was like, social media numbers are good and they're not good. They can be, they can tend to be overrated. And in my post, I was just kind of talking about like, listen, I have 42,000 followers on my DKW page, almost 20,000 on my hair page. And those, and those are good numbers. But nowadays people have like two, 300, 400,000. And there's people I know that probably have 300,000 to 400,000 followers and I'm making more than them. Do you know what I mean? And we kind of touched base on that last week. So it's like, you have to, 
you kind of have to take into account what's working and what's not. And the only way to do that inside your own marketing is test it. And don't get so caught up on the things that are not working. If you're busting your ass doing social media and you're not getting the results that you want, then you have to dial back and figure out how to make it work. Absolutely. I so I always ramble, you guys. So, like, you'll ask me a question, and I'm like, woo. So, you know, just cut me off. Whenever you feel like I should be cut no. off, you just cut me off. I liked it. It was good. Like the golden nuggets come out when you start. I know. Rambling. I'm like, here comes a good one. Here's a good one. Listen in. <laughs> it's like we're gold mining all the time here. <laughs> so even with the marketing and the social media aspect, on top of that, putting out a message is not enough obviously, because anyone can hear it and anyone can come to you. But the real question is when you get a qualified lead, which obviously like Val pointed out earlier, qualified leads to everybody are something completely different. A client that Danielle wants in her chair might not be a client that I want in mine, might not be a client that Mackenzie wants in hers. Who you are and how you operate depends on what you consider to be a qualified lead. So what we consider leads inside of NBR, DKW, and BMS are people actually going through, you've put out a message through social media, you've marketed yourself, and they're basically saying, yes. They're giving you that very first yes. They're going to your website. You're getting an email or a phone number, an address, something, so you can actually go and contact them. But then here's the tricky part. Once you actually go through and contact them, we le- we're still in the world of marketing, but we're going more so into the world of sales. Are you actually able to sell something? Now, here, Coach Val, you have been known and called many a times the assassin closer. And Garrett has, if he were here, I'm sure he would have a lot of yelling along with those words. But how were you at closing? So before, obviously, I know BMS and NBR kind of, you got thrown to the wolves in the Garrett land of closing. But now you're very, very good at it. So talk to us about actually going through and closing leads and sales. Um, in the beginning, it was like terrifying because you're just like it, you're just in like a super vulnerable spot, and you're like, okay, you're gonna give me your money. <laughs> but I think the more you do it, obviously with anything, the more you do it, the more natural it becomes. And I also now have a confidence behind it that I know that once they do come, that I'm gonna be able to produce the results that they're looking for. So I can tell quickly in a conversation, and I'll be <clears throat> able to like sell that, you know, because I have the confidence behind it, knowing that. What I'm selling in BR or if it's the BMS class, like I know that it works and that it's going to be a solution for what they're looking for. So I feel like in that aspect, that's what helps me on closing is that I know that like my production is going to back it up. Absolutely. And so Mackenzie. So we obviously know, I know myself, whenever I started selling anything, I was the most awkward human being in the world. (laughs) And I know that I fucked up my own closing because I'm like, it's going to be 500. (laughs) And I would start mumbling and be scared and weird. And all of a sudden I'm sweating. It's super hot. And I'm like, this fucking shit's garbage. I cannot, I can't close anything now. So obviously the game of closing is completely different when you're trying to sell, you know, a $20 haircut. Oh my God, Danielle. (laughs) Let's just, let's just look at Danielle really quick. Uh (laughs) Here's what she's doing. I love that she thinks we can't hear her with a room of four microphones it's her child it's fine (laughs) but with that anyway I know that I myself fucked up my closing and my sales because I got so inside of my head about it that I wasn't even sure I could do it I knew my skills could back it up but going through there's a very tricky game of convincing someone to get something and then being marketed and seduce themselves so Mackenzie talk to us about the difference of seducing someone willingly obviously as opposed to going through and convincing them when you're closing Well, I think we've all like had that buyer's remorse with something where you buy something, you go in and you you spend a little bit more than you're wanting to spend. And immediately you're like, why did I buy that? Why did I spend that? And I think the difference is, is the person that you're selling shouldn't be having that feeling. So if they're making the decision and choosing on their own saying, hey, I really want this, they've converted themselves and made the decision on their own versus you're like telling them, oh, come on. Danielle you look so good with these or you know like if you're trying to convince them and you're pulling them along and you're kind of like coaching them into buying it that's never going to work versus if they've chosen it and made the decision on their own absolutely so Danielle I'm ready close you're like give, give it to me I got it oh so <laughs> closing I mean it's a huge thing and this is something that your organic hustle from throughout the years of marketing and blogging and pictures everything you've done you had to become a really good closer I think I don't, I never really thought of myself as somebody good at sales or good at closing. Like, don't give me that face. Like, (laughs) I literally remember, like, my first salon I ever worked at, and the guy was, like, called me into his office, the owner, and he's like, 
I'm going to need you to up your product sales. And I was like, I don't like that shampoo. I'm not going to sell it. <laughs> and it was in that moment that I realized these in a, even early in my career, I was like, holy shit, I actually can only sell things I like. Isn't that weird? Mm. And, and so I think that when people tell me they're, they don't want to be pitchy or they don't want to be salesy or they're not closers or this and that, I'm like, then you don't love what you're doing enough. Um, and if you're not at that level, figure out how to get to that level. It's like the stylist that I just shared the story. You think she's closing? No, because she fucking hates her job. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get to that level, you have to genuinely love what you do. And now, like, every person that sits in our chair, like, we we do a consultation with. We're not somebody you can jump online on an app and just book. And it's and, and it's kind of what we want to fill out that, that client. And extensions is a special service. But we're kind of, like, we're looking to make sure that they're a good fit. Um, not only on the hair side, but energetically, you know what I mean? And make sure, I know you were talking about like referrals and like long-term clients. We want to make sure that there's somebody that can maintain them. Are they just a, a ones, a one, like they're going to be in town and they just kind of want to get a quick fix, you know what I mean? And like try it out or they follow us on social media and they're like, eh, hey, why not? You know what I mean? It's like you build relationships and trust on clients sometimes over three to four peri- like appointments. And sometimes you win, and o- win them over in one and sometimes you win them over in four. Do you know what I mean? So when I'm getting on and I'm closing a client, I'm kind of interviewing them. Uh, interview sorry I want to look at you Ani I'm kind of like interviewing him a little bit I'm I'm um just kind of figuring out what hair extensions have they tried and then uh, after I kind of hear their backstory I always go into kind of like relating to them oh yes I've tried tapins I've tried single bonds I've tried this here's what I experienced and I don't ever like I'm not ever like talking shit like all oh, the fucking glue and the tape and the <laughs> I'm like yes I experienced those and I had similar problems to you um that's actually what kind of this is why what I prefer on my hair and this is what I love and I'm not overselling and over pitching it but I'm sharing my passion and my love and why it works for me and nine out of ten times people are like great and if they're not if they're like well why is this better than da 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 I'm like hey you know what it's better because I wear it in my own hair and I wouldn't put anything else in my hair and I take great great pride in my work and and when I tell them things like that they're like oh okay so I think the bottom line is if you say you're not good at sales it's because you need to become better at your craft and if you become better at your craft and you love your work more you'll be able to sell it and it's just natural and people will be like ah like I want what she's having like oh I love her passion or her passion it's like it's infectious like I want to be a part of that team or that tribe or even with our education people like I I might be a little crazy sometimes and I ramble and I and I just I'm just passionate about it and I think people might come into our education and be like I don't know what the fuck I bought but like <laughs> something she said I was like sold so anyways if you say that you're not good at sales if you say if that's the first step you need to make it's it's figure out how to love your job and you'll the sales will come natural and another thing I think, especially when it comes to closing itself and selling is guys, time under tension, because realistically you can't take one class on anything. You can't come to an MBR class and say that you're great at it or good. Everything in life requires time under tension, even going down and going to a balayage class. You can't take one class and be like, I'm an expert balayager. It's fine. <laughs> it's just simply even not how it works. <laughs> a lot of people do that many a times in the Why hair world. Why is it like that with extensions though? Like you would never expect to take a color class and then you come to take an extension class and they're like, I'm, I, I, took, I took your class 20 years ago why am i not certified yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) interesting topic wrap there (laughs) but yeah it's interesting so i did i just think that yeah i think it's a a lot of time people like you said they're not willing to put the work forth in order to actually get better inside of our mastermind program we actually require that our students are doing something we call power practice it's 15 minutes of NBR practice every single day, whether it be on a mannequin or your best friend or an actual client, it's something that we require them to do every single day. The reason being, they have more time under tension, they're getting more comfortable, they're getting faster, they're getting better. The, the faster and better that you get, the better result your clients are gonna have as well, which ultimately does come right back to selling and marketing. So even with closing, if you do two closing calls and you fuck them both up, you have zero time under tension. You have done two. You didn't do very well. And people mm-hmm. tend to actually just want to completely give up and not do anything else. So Val, let's come to you. When it comes to closing, how do you feel it's changed from the beginning stages of you did a couple consultations to now where you've done? I mean, I know just one day there's a chance we can do 30 consultations. Oh my God. <laughs> We're getting almost 30 to 40 BMS convention applications every Shut single day. Up. Which, in case you didn't know, we are having our second annual BMS <laughs> convention in Huntington Beach, June, June 5th, 6th, and 7th. If you have not gone to get your ticket yet, 
We are, I mean. What are we down to? Um, last I checked a couple days ago, we only had 80 tickets left out of 300. Oh, nice. Yes. So if you have not gone. <laughs> We've been on the phone a lot. Oh, my God. <laughs> we are hustling constantly. So you want to talk about how many closing calls Val and I have done just in the past, what, three weeks? It's been insane. So even with that, go to BigMoneyStylist.com and you can take a look and see the movie that we have for BMS Convention. It's going to be insane. And I tell everyone, if you've been looking for a chance to really like get your feet in wet, like get your feet wet with NBR, this is a really great chance to start. And it's it's only $1,000. Like this is not some it's, crazy price. We over deliver. Let's be real. Like mm-hmm. we over, like I, I would, I would love to go to a class anywhere in in the United States, I don't want to go clear too far, but <laughs> I would love to go to a class that can deliver the experience that we do. Like I have done the class circuit and I just think what what, what we offer at the price point and the quality, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's like second to it's none. It's second to none. I mean, we personally call you and interview you out of 300 students to make sure you're a good fit to come to this class because we care. Because we want to make sure you're in it for the right reasons. We don't want we want to make sure that you're not just like, oh, I guess I'll check these guys out. Like we we want you to have good results, you know, to to help you and to help us. So anyway, and realistically, because I'm sure some people are thinking and they're like, I have to apply to come. Yes. Yes, you do, because we've said it before and we'll say it 100 times again. BMS, realistically, it's not for everybody. It just simply isn't. What we're creating is not just a bunch of people who took a one-off class and they were like, that was cool, I guess, whatever. We are creating a culture and we are completely turning around the hair industry. What we're doing is... It's insane and it's crazy, but God damn it, it works every single time. Like I this know, is, the results are crazy. The res- mm-hmm. We have literal proof. We have Ooh. results, like numbers proof, and you have living proof in front of you, that would be me, <laughs> that the program does work. So, Val, yes. time under tension <laughs> with closing. <laughs> It's been an insane couple of weeks, definitely with BMS, but it's been years that you've been doing this and you started off doing NBR or BMS um, application calls that were like a $2,000 class. And now here we are selling BMS intensive is completely sold out up until August. That's $4,000. So how do you feel yourself have changed with time under tension in two years of making these calls? Well, just like I was saying before, like I feel like it's the confidence thing I've had a million calls so now I'm not like oh my god what's gonna happen the first time I'm like what if they ask me this I don't know this like this is (laughs) gonna be so weird but now like if I'm doing an NBR consultation I've worn these in my head non-stop I've not even taken them out for a day for two years like there there's not a question that you can throw at me that I can't answer and same thing with the BMS side like when we're doing the BMS calls like I've been with this program since it was like just a thought in the air a baby, to, how, a baby thought. <laughs> to how it is now. So again, like I've been a part of it and invested the whole time. So there's not a question that anyone could ask that I can't answer. And then that I don't truly believe in it. Like I was saying earlier, I totally believe in like NBR and um, I feel like my skills can like back it up. And same thing with BMS. If you do the work and I know that the results will like work for that person. But that is why we do the interviews is so... You know, when they're on the phone and they're like, well, why would I have to do homework? What do you mean I would get dropped if I don't do the pre-training? Why would I then? And I'm like, you know, you're you're definitely not quite ready. So but and that's why, because I'm protective of it, too. So I want to make sure that everyone that comes into DKW styling, that they they want NBR, that they're aware of the commitment that it is to take care of everything so that they can have the most amazing experience. And same thing with BMS. I want to make sure that when they come in and they take our course, that they get amazing results. But if they're wanting it to be handed to them on a silver platter Mm -hmm. and they're not even willing to do pre-training, that's not the right fit. That's not the right stylist. No one's going to win in that situation. So it's just like a really cool thing because I'm aware of like how it takes everyone to like merge together. It takes like the client that they're wanting to do it, that I'm selling and that I believe in what I'm selling, that we can produce what we are selling. And then that's that that perfect blend is what makes me have like more confidence in closing a sales. You know, what's interesting about that is like you would never go into hair school and say, well, do I have to do the homework? Do I have to show up on time? But I can still graduate. Right. And I still have I get all the skills. Right. But I, I have to do the homework. Oh, wait, we can't. We can't do that here. No. <laughs> so just think of just think of it as like your, your your education is reinvesting in like hair school and like you can't no, you cannot not do your homework. <laughs> so let me ask you guys a question. Have you ever seen something online? Because I think Amazon is a very scary thing some days. You look at something and all of a sudden it's just everywhere you turn. There's oh, ads yes. for everything. Isn't that creepy? Yes, it's oh, super no. creepy. So have you guys ever gone through you you get marketed something? We're sold and marketed every single day, every second, all the time. But with that, have you ever seen something, seen an ad and you're like Ah, oh, this is it. I'm going to get this. It's going to be the best. I'm going to love it. You get it. And it turns out you are just disappointed. Turns out the marketing was 
legit. It was amazing. <laughs> the product, wah, wah, not so much. Mackenzie, you're nodding. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> I'm actually giggling to myself because this is going to gross you all now. out. Yeah, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> I was scrolling on Instagram and there was this thing. It was like the pimple popper. And all you do is like put it on and it like pops the zip for you, but it leaves no mark. It just goes away the next day, right? Oh, man. So, of course, I ordered it. It was like <laughs> 10 bucks. Yeah, it totally didn't work. And I was like, I totally just bought into a scam. First of all, why do I want this disgusting device that looks like <laughs> something from the dentist's office? And second of all, it doesn't even work. So cool. I still have blackheads and I still have a problem. But you're like, it was 10 bucks, whatever. <laughs> it was 10 bucks, big deal. But I think on education, that would suck. So really, the topic that we're going towards <laughs> is when you market, and we tell this to all of our students, this is why we have such a big emphasis on power practice, is what you are marketing, that is what clients are expecting when they come and sit in your chair. You can have the best marketing in the world, but if you cannot produce and deliver what you are promising on, they are never going to come back and you cannot build a business off of that. So yeah, yeah, Danielle, talk to us about this. I think I even learned that the hard way in the beginning of my career. And again, I shared a story on my blog, (laughs) but um, (laughs) I, I, like when I first started educating, I was like, I, I don't know, like my skills in educating were not there. And it, it's a one thing to do hair, and it's another thing to, to teach. You have to be an extremely good teacher. And I have so much respect for platform artists and teachers now that I just threw myself into the mix as a self-proclaimed educator. <laughs> and in the beginning, I um, I think that I wasn't I, – I knew the method solid. I knew it worked, and I, I went in, and, and I – and I started doing classes. People like my work. You know what I mean? And I was just like, yeah, come do a class. And I'd be like, yeah, you should beat this shit in. So that in. You're in, you're on your way. Good for you. <laughs> and it came back to bite me. It, it, like people were like not having the results I wanted. And they were frustrated. And they'd be like, oh, that MBR system is full of crap. And I wanted to be like, whatever. Do what, you think I'm a scam? And I'm just sit, like doing, doing clients hair because it's a big scam. I have so many people and so many before and afters. It's just a scam. You know what I mean? But I think that people were disappointed. And at first I was super offended. I was like well screw you like whatever you're just not trying that hard and then I decided to take a good look at me and I was like "Mm, okay well clearly I can up my skills too and so I started to work on becoming a better teacher and figuring out why what I was doing was working and really like pinpointing it and then that's why like when I say my experience in our education is like second to none because I'm like I just was so sad that the the experience that I was having, that people were buying it and feeling like ripped off. Like, oh, just another class under the belt, just another certification under the belt, just another one. And I was like, no, because I was never trying to go into it like, hey, like, here's a $10 pimple popper. It might work. It might not, it might not but it's 10 bucks. Like, I was like, no, I know this works, you know? So I kind of, like, experienced that, like, the hard way because I think that I was like, Oh, and so that's why I, I keep stressing on the show. I'm like, you guys, up your skills, up your skills, up your skills, because it doesn't matter like how good your marketing is. If you are not an expert at your craft, you you'll you'll disappoint the marketplace. So stop worrying about making more money if you're not the best at your craft. Like continue to be better. Like always strive to be better, and through time, results will follow. And not only that, we've talked a little bit about this before, which now I'm not even sure if it was here at the podcast or inside of our live training for all of our mastermind students, but BMS and NBR and DKW, the brands are growing so big and so quickly that we ever, I mean, NBR, it's brand recognition at this point. Everybody Mm -hmm. knows and they know what it's supposed to look like because we have so much content out on social media where we're continuously marketing and everybody knows what NBR looks like. They know what the rows are supposed to look like, the blend, the cut, Mm -hmm. the color. So here's what we've seen artists who have taken a class before and not fully committed to actually doing the work, their clients then end up reaching out to us. And then they come to us and say, is this what it's supposed to look like? (laughs) Is this what my hair is supposed to be? I'm not really sure my stylist is doing it right. Can you go talk to my stylist? Uh, Nope. So Val, you're already laughing because you know this is something we deal with every single day. Yes. Is there a question? <laughs> yeah, talk to us about it. Yeah. Thank you very much. You huge dick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Going through and having to handle almost like on the back end of artists who aren't willing to put in the time and effort to perfect their craft and what we see inside of DKW because of it. Um, well, sometimes we get extra clients <laughs> from that because we're having to fix the situation. But again, like it'll come like they'll they'll blame us or mad at us, but it's like you didn't put in the work, you know? You have to, you're the only one who can make yourself better at the craft. Like once we've like taught you what you need to know, if you're not doing anything with it, that's like on you. And that's sometimes people have a hard time like 
taking accountability for that. So if you're not, like Daniel was saying earlier, if you're not getting the results that you want, like look at yourself and how you can make that better. Like you're not going to be a great like NBR artist overnight. It takes a lot of practice, a lot, (laughs) a lot of trial and error. So um, you have to be the one to like put in the work so that what you're producing, you can get that client to like come back. And again, like we always tell our students, like evaluate your work. Like when they come back for their tightening appointment, like how could you do something differently? How can you make it better? How can you make the client's experience even better for the next time so that they will want to continue to come back? Don't get an ego about it and just be like, well, I did it. I, I took the MBR class. Like, it, you know, I'm just not getting great results from it. It's like, well, why? Why are you not? Because and that's what I would see. I would see like Danielle fucking killing it in the salon and like everyone loving their transformations and it being amazing. And then we would teach classes and then I would get like a shit ton of emails about everyone struggling with a multitude of things. And I'm like, where is this disconnect? How can we like so we're going from it like from two different directions, like where are people struggling? Where's the disconnect with us? Like, where are people struggling with the NBR technique and where are we not conveying and training them good enough so that they are having the same results that Danielle was having? Because now I feel like it can be replicated, but I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. And not only that, because you yourself first started off working with Danielle. So guys, imagine working with the creator of a method that you've never done before, you've never really done extensions before, and now here you are having to learn side by side. So what was the journey like for you then? I mean, working side by side with Danielle for, I mean, since the very beginning and having to hone your craft, working on the creator of the method you're trying to learn. I was like, Val, just beat it no in and stitch deal. it. <laughs> I rem- the very first time I did her hair, like if you know anything about NBR, like we'll tell our students in the beginning, like now they have so much information available to them, but I didn't know. I just <laughs> only saw Danielle doing shit. So I'm like, that shit happens like super fast. And so she's like, oh, we got like an hour. Can you do my rose? And I'm like, yeah, I got this. And another client was coming in and I was like sweating so bad. Like, let me freaking do this like as fast as I possibly can. Not even worrying about like quality, just like that. I had one hour to like get this done. But like our new people will tell them like your first appointment is going to take like you like six hours because you're going to suck. It's going to like take you a lot of time. But I didn't like know that. So it was, um, It was fun learning how to, like, just seeing, like, you're seeing the highest, like, example. And then I'm like, no one is ever going to come to me. Like, if they ever have the option between, like, Danielle and me, like, no one's ever going to pick me. But that led, like, a fire under my ass instead of, like, being, like, pouty and being like, fuck, I'm going to suck forever. Like, I'm just, like second best or nothing compared to like the queen of NBR. I was like, okay, now I got to practice. Now I got to do better. Now I got to ask for feedback. Now I got to like, you know, so I just was like constantly putting myself out there and she would, she would say like, these are too loose. These feel like they're like six weeks grown out and it's like been three days, you know? (laughs) So, I mean, some people, you guys are like lucky you're practicing on like friends and quietly and not hearing stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm just practicing on the creator of it. No big deal. (laughs) Honest feedback. I remember though, like watching you and like, I could tell you were somebody that I'd be like, I could like just throw out there and you'd figure it out and I remember there was this point where like your work started to get so good and I was like oh shit her work is so good and I was like <laughs> almost like oh my god it's so good but I was like so proud I was like oh I'm, I'm becoming a better teacher. <laughs> I don't even know if I was becoming a better teacher. You I think were. you were just re- like willing to be like, okay, I'll figure this out. I got this. But I was like, oh my God, it's getting so good. <laughs> and that's what, for the first time I was like, see, I knew this shit would work. Let's go. Let's <laughs> deploy, deploy education. <laughs> we're taking over the world. <laughs> Going all in. And Val, I feel like you touched on a really interesting topic of saying that you worked with Danielle inside of the very first DKW Styling Salon. And now you're CEO of the current DKW Styling. I love that title. Thank you. <laughs> Which is also expanding so it's a very exciting time for you it is and so even with that I feel when I first because I moved to California to work inside DKW from St. Louis and I kind of had the same fears and thoughts of well, no one's going to want to come to me everybody knows Danielle everybody knows Val I'm a fucking nobody who showed up from St. Louis oh I shouldn't say it like that I a lot of people that actually listen to it there sorry guys so <laughs> I showed up here from St. Louis and then it was a matter of, well, how in the hell is anyone going to want to come to me? And I will never forget that Danielle, I assisted her for like, I think it was like a month, if even something like that. And she said, okay, she goes, you can start booking clients if you can get them. I was like, oh, okay. If, if, all right, we're going to do this. I had a client booked within two days. But what I think is interesting is, and Mackenzie, I'm going to come to you on this. Even though you work with people and they can be people that are all doing NBR, all doing color, how you market dictates who comes and sits in your chair. So Mackenzie, you just moved here from Salt Lake where you worked with another NBR certified stylist whose name is also Mackenzie. You guys shared- Really confusing. You guys shared a building, you shared clients, you shared basically everything. Guys, say bye to Danielle. She's heading out. Peace, love you. Bye. I thought you said I have to go pee. I'm like, oh, that's fine too. All right, you can do that. 
So, but yeah, you came from a studio suite in Salt Lake City, sharing a room with another Mackenzie. So same name, same place, same everything you guys were building, yet your clientele were so vastly different. So what is it that you saw working with someone that, although you're aiming for the same thing, you were still both able to attract your own clients? Well, I think what's interesting with that is we both were, although we have the same name and everything is very different, <laughs> we have very different personalities. And um, so w- what I found is I, w- I would look at my clients and I'm like, I have these like older women, not like saying there's anything wrong with that, but I have older women, typically moms in my chair, and she would get more like cute college girls and like younger, a younger clientele. And so I have no idea to this day of what I was doing differently with my marketing versus what she was doing differently. Neither were bad, neither were good. They were both completely different and both worked. So even though if you work in different salons or even working in DKW, we all attract something different. And I think that's something to remember as a stylist is to not get into the game of competition and things like that. Just remember that your marketing is you and it needs to be a true reflection of you. And if it's not, that won't follow up with your production every time. Absolutely. And like Mackenzie said, the message that you're putting out there whenever you're doing marketing, it is a reflection of you. It's who you are. I know myself. I probably can't have anybody sit in my chair that doesn't like profanity because fuck is like an every other word for me (laughs) or I'm generally calling Bella Dick and neither one of those words are generally accepted anywhere. So, but I just know with my marketing, when I'm doing videos, when I'm posting things, yes, there's going to be some bad words like thrown right about. But at the same time, that has brought me some very funny clients and very fun clients, even just recently that have that very same personality. Cause Val, you, like I said, working with Danielle, you don't you guys don't attract remotely the same clients. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to us about like your clientele and what you've done to attract like your ideal clients. Um, I remember Danielle had one client and I was like, oh, I would love her to be my client because like that's like the vibe that I went. And I remember Danielle thinking like she's just like not my favorite. And I'm like and that's when it kind of like clicked to me that I was like, OK, like we have like different things that we're wanting. And that's when like Kenzie was saying, you just have to be true to like who you are and the right person will like sit in your chair. So I would say like Danielle's they love like everyone that sits in Danielle's chair is a super fan of Danielle and they love to talk to her about shopping and get her like input on business and all of that. Like most people who sit in my chair, they obviously like free people. They, <laughs> they know about band tees and hats. And um, I mean, I talk about my kids a lot. So I do attract like a lot of like moms. Um, what else? Just more like a like a really like chill vibe because I think that I mean that is my personality. Yeah. I'm not super like high strung, and so I I'm appreciative that me putting myself out there has then gotten that kind of clientele in my chair because they're not super high strung. We're not talking like politics. It's just like a chill, cool vibe, and that's what makes me love my job so much. Like every client that comes in, like I'm like, oh my god, you're like so rad. This is awesome. So. Um, putting myself out there has definitely like paid off being like true and authentic to who I am because I've then like attracted that into my chair. So now looking back, knowing your old clientele before you really started marketing and kind of gave way to the daily four and what you were doing, do you now, can you look back and see a vast difference on the clientele that you had as oh, opposed totally. to Oh, totally. I was just doing, like, I would be so excited before if I got to do, like, a balayage highlight or something, like, melty and rooty. And now, like, I don't have, and I was just doing, like, older clients. And while I liked them, it, I was never, like, enjoying the art side of it mm-hmm. because it was just, like, they were, like, my bread and butter they were like paying the bills and they were like, it was consistent money, but it's it was every four week root touch up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or just like plain highlights to the scalp. Cause you know, you can't convince them on anything else and they're just like stuck in their ways and they're like <laughs> Aquanet hairspray. I'm like, your hair is never moving. Like there's no movement in that, but you know, you, you do it. They pay the bills. It's cool. But like now, like I'm literally excited for each client. Like my wheels start turning the night before I look at my books for the next day and I'm like, oh, this is what I'm going to do with this person. And oh, I'm already seeing where I want to add dimension. And this is where I want to brighten her up. And like then now there's just like this super artsy side that like I never have to let die because I have that right client in my chair and I get to have like that freedom to do what I love and they trust me because they came to me because they like the message I was putting out. So I freaking love it. Perfect. So with that, we're going to be coming to our last topic now, which is something that we have been working extremely hard inside of DKW and that is building systems. 
having systems in play and systemization to actually be able to go forward and get those sustainable and very predictable results. Because realistically, if you can go through and market to anyone and everyone and you can close them, but you don't have any kind of system in play, that's when shit goes sideways, stuff falls through the cracks, and you're not really sure on where to go from there. So Val, like I said, we're going into systems now with DKW. You being the CEO, this is like your space. So talk to us about what's happening. Um, it just makes like a smooth, um, like w- we're always like trying to expand at DKW. So now that like we're getting all these systems in place, it's so much easier. Each person that joins onto the team, they have that much easier of a like experience with us because it's like this is how it goes because we figured it out. So like we figured out like through trial and error what's working and now we can have these like sustainable and predictable results like you said so like from the beginning of like marketing to the application process to our follow-up programs to how we ring people up the emails that they get like afterwards like every last detail is so that it can be predictable so that we know what to do with anyone when a new person comes on the team we know what to teach them and it's just like smooth it's smooth for the stylist it's smooth for the client and then we know what happens with that because we've already tested it and we know like okay this is going to produce this and you don't have to ever go back to that place of scarcity like I don't know what we're going to do there's not that panic because it's like okay we've tried a bunch of shit and this is what works and this is what we're doing and then so Mackenzie so you yourself you were in the second ever BMS one I always have to say like BMS 1.2 because <laughs> BMS 2 was something completely different but you were inside that of inside of that as well so with BMS 2 it was basically we pre-trained for what three months two three months yeah I mean it was, it was pure insanity to actually go and build out what we call our funnel which is really just a marketing tool it's a website with videos and the application process so Obviously, Mackenzie, having the funnel in play totally changed the game for us. I know it changed the game for me. What was the difference you saw in your clientele and your business kind of pre-funnel when it was just like someone texting you at midnight saying, hi, Ken, I'm a friend of so-and-so, a friend's cousin, sisters, whatever, as opposed to afterwards when they were actually going through the entire system itself of the funnel and actually filling out an application? It was completely different. Before I was doing... I was doing old lady haircuts. I was doing old root touch-ups. And there's nothing wrong with those, but that's not what was igniting the artist in me. And so once I put the funnel out there and I was putting that marketing out to specific people, that's when I felt like I was an an artist again. And I was no longer kind of slaving because what ends up happening as hairstylist is you get a new client, they're texting you at 12 o'clock at night, you've just been behind the chair for 10 hours, and now you have to go home and text everyone. And it's draining and it's tiring. So the funnel for me kind of took away, and I also hired a receptionist to kind of take that on for me, but um, it just took away the stress and the heaviness of being a slave, but then also allowed me to get their clients that I wanted, the clients that would allow me to be an artist behind the chair and and really do what I was passionate about, as well as I, I didn't have to sit back and just take it. <laughs> like everyone, you get these clients that drain you and they're tiring, and now I have the choice to get the clients that I want to take because I put those systems in play. Absolutely, and that's something definitely big that we always say is, We assume as stylists, we're supposed to be sitting behind the chair, taking any and every client, doing any and every service. And at the end of the day, that doesn't, that doesn't fill you up. It doesn't, I didn't, I wanted to say love tank, but I also didn't (laughs) want to say, but it doesn't, as an artist, it doesn't fill you up. It doesn't bring you more joy into your life. But systems wise, I know for myself, when I went from pre having a funnel to pre funnel to post funnel, What happened was I saw a shift in my clients as well. It wasn't so much more me having to like go through and sell them and like really convince them to come and get NBR and get their hair done by me. A lot of that was done on the front side, which is something very cool. So now it all came down to a quick 10 minute conversation because I was complete garbage at closing at first. But afterwards, after (laughs) doing it a million times, I definitely got much better. But it came down to going through the funnel, it almost eliminated a lot of those like crazy late night conversations where you're having to reiterate things 500 times, answer a million different questions that are really the same five questions over and over, but with 20 different people. The funnel eliminated that for me. So having that funnel in play, I knew by the time they got to the end of it, it would be a 10 minute phone conversation answering any questions they might still have. And closing was a thousand times easier. So Kenzie, so you have a funnel still. Mm -hmm. So how did you see that happening from going to, because you just said you were really great at referrals. You had a shit ton of referrals. But then afterwards, when all your systems were in play and you had your funnel, did you feel those conversations were different? 
the conversations were completely different. I became in control of the situation where it wasn't like, oh, please be my client. Please, please, please. It was a situation of, I don't know if I'm a great fit for you. Like the hair and the color that I do isn't something that you want. And, and this relationship isn't going to work. So it took it from a situation of, oh, I'll take anything and everything to, I don't think I'm going to fulfill your needs and you're not, you're not going to make me happy as a client. So it just changed the game that way. Did you feel more power going into these conversations, knowing that ultimately you could decide we're not a fit? completely it felt like before my hands were tied and it was like oh she wants to come to me but like I'm really tired of doing perms so it 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 took that restraint away to, and gave me the power to be the stylist that I really truly wanted to be Perfect. And so then with that, like Val had touched base earlier, we ought, we have started doing marketing for NBR inside the DKW salon. Now with these people, they really have no, they have no pre-framing. They really don't know who we are. They have never really seen much of us. And I know because I've done consultations for the DKW salon where they've been stalking Danielle for the past 15 years and they're obsessed with her. And then I've done these conversations where not so much. Val, what is the difference in going through and talking to someone who's had that framing, they've seen that marketing, they've been through our entire funnel, as opposed to someone who they're just like, yeah, yeah, that hair's kind of cute. I guess I could maybe talk to them. Um, they haven't taken a bunch of like small yes steps to get there. So like we always say like, you know, $1,500 for extensions isn't like a one time like, yeah, I, the first time you hear that, you're not like, sweet, sign me up. <laughs> it takes like a while to like get there like, oh my God, people pay $1,500 for hair. So it if they haven't gone through the pre-framing, they haven't said yes to like a bunch of little steps along the way. So then you get on that phone call, they they have no frame, they don't know like who you are, they don't really know like what it's about. And then they're just like, of course, their first question is, like, well, how much does it cost? And you're like, $1,500, they're like, what? You know? <laughs> and it, it takes more like, it, it then puts you in the position of like selling and convincing more so than it is like if you have the funnel, they watch the videos, they said yes to the next step, they chose to watch another video, they chose to send the email or to send in their email, they received the email, they followed up, you know, like they, t they took a bunch of steps and they knew what they were like, not getting themselves into, but they were very aware of like all, all of that was going on where the new ones, um, the cold leads, they don't really like know. So the conversation is different. I feel like they need like a little more babying, but we want to be careful to not go in the, in the form of like saving them or convincing them. We still want them to like want to have the extensions. Absolutely. And then even with that, we keep coming back to the talk of funnels and communicating a message. And so we're going to jump into the second portion. So four weeks ago, um, we talked with, you know, all of us and Garrett and Danielle about communicating a message and what you're really putting out into the marketplace, which is marketing in and of itself. The second step of strategic seduction is capturing permission. Mackenzie, talk to us about capturing permission. What does that actually mean? Capturing permission for me is more just like getting the attention of the client that I really want to get. So mm -hmm. on Instagram, that's really where I do most of my marketing. And I feel like if if they're not attracted to what I'm putting out there, then I'm not going to capture their permission. But if it's a golden client, someone who really wants to sit in my chair, the work that I'm putting out there, they're going to like it and they're going to see it and they're going to want to follow and continue the relationship on that path of yeses. Yeah, so you're getting your very first yes. And when you're capturing permission, one thing that you're definitely capturing, it's a way to contact them, whether it be a phone number, an email, um, it can be their address. You are getting their permission in some way, shape, or form to contact them. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people are going to come back and say, oh, but I have 30,000 followers on Instagram. That's so good. I'm capturing tons of permission. No, no, no. That is actually the complete opposite of what you want. And here's the biggest reason, guys. You have to realize if you are banking on being able to talk to your following whenever you want, you're fucking crazy. Those algorithms change every single day on every social media platform, especially because Facebook and Instagram are the two biggest ones. They're owned by the same people. So the rules are generally the same. And those rules are you have to pay to play to even get to be seen on any of it. So here's my question. What happens when all of a sudden Instagram says, you know what, we're going to shut down, we're done. Then what do you do? How do you go back through and contact those 30,000 people that you swore you had access to in any way, shape or form? 
You don't. And that's the biggest problem. That's why going through and actually getting a way to contact someone, normally it's an email, that's what we have inside of our funnel, is so important because you can go through, you can email them, you can send them anything you want at any moment's notice, and no one can take that away from you. You own it. You own that list. These people said yes to you. They want to hear from you. So we, inside of DKW and MBR, we do a ton of stuff like this. We talk to all of our BMS students and NBR students. And that also comes right back to marketing and selling because realistically, some people need a little bit more time. Yeah. I've heard people saying that they stalk Danielle for five years. Before you're going to make an appointment. Yes. And Insane. That's crazy. But then we have people who, you know, some are ready after just a little bit of time. But why is going through and being able to send these people, whether they say yes or no, emails and videos and more marketing and sales, why is that so important to continue to get them to convert? You're staying in the front of their mind. So they might have like forgotten for a little bit, like they were interested one day and they were like taking the steps and then, you know, they decided, nope, it's not, I'm not ready for that. But if you're blasting out an email to everyone and you can just like keep staying in the front of their mind, it's fast for us. It's efficient for us. Like, hey, we're doing this with NBR. Hey, we have this new class coming up. Hey, we're doing convention. Hey, we got this new podcast and we're able to blast everyone who's already like been signing up and saying, yeah, I want to know more about this BMS thing. I want to know more about NBR. We're able to get to them quickly and then they can still like do it on their own time. They can convert their mindset over their 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 own time, but they are still receiving information from us. It's not one and done. Like I hit follow on Instagram and then like I don't like their stuff. So then I never see them on Instagram. You know, mm -hmm. if you're able to like stay in contact with them, the possibility of converting them over to be a sale for something for you to produce way higher and val's giving you guys little nuggets of what's going to happen in four weeks which is convert mindset hmm. Mm, this will be like a, foreshadowing oh this will be a good one i feel like you guys should come on back and listen in four weeks which we are coming now to the end of the podcast i'm always surprised it's been an hour i'm like really this is it yeah all right and in case you guys have not gone and looked bms podcast is actually running i believe number 93 94 on all of itunes after only 10 episodes we are running number four in the category of arts and number one in fashion and beauty. And for those of you, of course, who are missing our more tall, handsome, built Ryan, C whatever the fuck Garrett calls himself <laughs> all the time, he also has three running podcasts for Wake Up Warrior. His company and BMS is beating all of them. So... <laughs> Thanks. Sorry about that, Garrett, but apparently we're doing something better. <laughs> it's us lovely ladies. That's what it is. So with that being said, oh, my headphones are about to fall off. Um, don't, go, don't forget to go and take a look at BigMoneyStylist.com. We are having our convention in June, Huntington Beach, California. And like I said earlier, we're being close to sold out. I know. 300 tickets. We've only been selling for, what, maybe three I got weeks? like 12 phone calls after this. So we got 12 tickets left. <laughs> less. Um, less. Oh, yeah. And I have about another 10, email, 10 people I have to email. And I looked at my phone. I have 17 text messages. So <laughs> this will be a very interesting day. So with that, don't miss out on your chance. And that's what I tell everybody. This is something where you can really just dive in, get your feet wet, see what NBR is all about. And how we work it is we have two sessions every single day. One session will be all NBR. Yes, it will be hands-on. So you'll have a lot of hands-on practice and we will have more trainers on hand for these events because it's a much larger one. And then the second session of every single day or the second portion is actually business and marketing tools and tactics. So we're not just teaching you another method, like the million other methods you've learned before and the million other classes and then sending you home. The point of BMS itself is to incorporate all of it and build you up as an artist and as a businessman and woman itself. It's just an all encompassing way to live as opposed to just surviving, which is what we don't want for you. So and for those asking, um, there's more than just like hashtags. <laughs> we oh. don't even cover hashtags in our business training, but people are like, well, I already know the hashtags. When Have you had that when you have your are phone you? calls? They're like, well, I already know like hashtags. Oh, I'm pretty good at business. I'm like, no, we don't fucking no, we hashtag. Don't even, we don't even touch on <laughs> hashtags. So you should definitely come to class. <laughs> It did not take me. I went in one year from making four grand a month to making over 20,000 a month. And no, that was not with fucking hashtags that we don't even teach. Like we don't talk, we don't even touch base on that. What we're doing is something way more intense, way more serious. And I'm telling you now, it's nothing like you've ever learned before. That's why I was so able and willing and happy to leave my entire book of business, to leave my entire clientele, to leave working for myself, to move across the country, break up with my fiance, to do all these insane things to continue to be with BMS because I'm telling you this shit is going to take over and BMS convention two in June is going to be what changes 
everything. Like it will never again be the same after convention. So ladies, final words today. Oh, please come to convention. Like don't wait any longer. If you're listening to this, you've been following us for a while. You didn't randomly come across this podcast. So fill out the application. Ani or myself or Kenzie will be reaching out to you. We'll have like a quick little fun phone call and we can get you signed up and you're going to have the best time. You'll change your career, but you'll change your life. And I know that you might be like thinking or listening to this like that sounds so fucking cheesy, but I swear to God, it's true. (laughs) She's not lying with that. (laughs) Mackenzie? Honestly, if you are thinking about it, if you're on the fence, if you've been listening to the podcast, there's a reason. There's something inside of you that's telling you this is important. Stop getting frustrated in your job and whatever it is you're doing and just take the leap. You know you need to take the leap convention will change everything for you and remember you are sitting there right now with hundreds of men and women artists behind you who have gone through this course you're not alone in this there is proof there's actual factual human proof every single day of artists who have made the leap they've trusted they've gone forward and it has paid over it has paid them back tenfold. I myself came when there was no proof. There was nothing. I just came on, you know what? I like this girl over here. Danielle's pretty sweet. Garrett's fucking insane, but I'm going to do this shit. (laughs) So I, the one thing I've always done is trusted the voice inside of me that said, you have to do this. And I never knew why I could never figure it out, but I knew moving to California was fucking insane. I'm like, this could be a terrible (laughs) idea or a great idea. But I, the voice inside me said, you have to go. You have to do this. Do not pass this up. You will regret it for the rest of your life. You have to move. And that's exactly what I did. So if you're sitting there right now, knowing deep down inside, you're like, I have to do this. My, my life isn't what I want it to be. You don't have to admit it to anybody, but if you're sitting there thinking it and you're having those feelings, don't sit in that place any longer. Make a change. If you're not willing to take a stand for your life and what you want, no one is going to do it for you and no one will be able to save you. So take a chance and trust yourself for once. And we will see you guys next week.